Good morning. Hope you guys are doing well. My name is Karen. I'm a virtual faith and fitness coach. And um, if you're new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Every single Sunday at 7 a.m. Eastern Time, I hop on and do what's called Church Before Church. And um, I am not a pastor. I'm not a theologian. I'm just um, somebody who loves Jesus and always love to share what he's teaching me and what I'm learning. And so um, I'm speaking as somebody who just wants to sort of bring to you my understanding of scripture. And this morning, I'm so excited. I'm so excited for this topic because you guys, I feel like in our time today and in this world today, we are hit so hard by noise, distraction, flashy things. And I really firmly believe that we tend to get the most lost when our eyes shift on what actually matters and on the eternal things, right? Good morning, Jane. If you're gonna hop on live, I'd love for you to say good morning. If you're catching the replay, post replay below. Um, I'd love to engage with you guys behind the scenes and just hear what you're learning as well um, in your time of the Lord. And so we are gonna be digging into a lot of scriptures this morning. So I hope you brought your Bible. If not, you can pause me and go grab it or go grab it right now. And I'll say this, this past week, I did something called a three-day refresh. Basically, I wanted to reset my mind and my nutrition post-Thanksgiving, and I really used it as a time of fasting, even though I was still eating. You know, there were still periods of temptation and anything that kind of goes when you're trying to flush out um, crap from your body. And But I decided this time around, I was like, Lord, I want to still rise up early, even if I'm not going to be working out, and I just want to hear from you. I feel like my my heart has been really heavy and I just feel for the world. I feel for my brothers and sisters. I feel like we're constantly trying to please this person and that person and we're striving harder and we're more exhausted. And my mentor and friend Michelle Myers always says, you know, strive less and surrender more. Strive less and surrender more. You know, and maybe just don't even strive at all. The more we surrender, the closer to Jesus' heart we are and the more successful we become in his definition of success. And so as I was praying through um, just that time, the parable of the sower, man, like I have read that passage so many times and I think the biggest mistake that we sometimes make as Christians is we think we know something enough that we can't gain any more truth from it because I know that story, I know that story. And one of my personal goals every time I open the Bible is I want to read it like it's the first time I'm ever reading it. I don't care if I've heard it a million times. And the parable of the sower is, this is Matthew 13 and we're going to start out there this morning. Um, Yo, it is gonna, if you really ask the Lord to speak to you this morning, you're gonna hear from him this morning. Because that's what happened to me. You know, as God has been calling me to less business hours, not to be less effective or more idle, not at all, but it's working with that holy hustle and understanding that everything I am and everything I have is for him and his people. He has been peeling away refining and removing all the weeds that have been growing in my life and distracting me from the purpose of why I'm here. So if you grab your Bibles, we're going to start in Matthew 13 and we're going to go from verses 1 to 9 this morning. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him and he got into a boat and sat in it while the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still, other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop 160 or 30 times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. I could probably spend many hours this morning going through this parable in each particular seed and where it was planted. But for this morning's subject of overcoming the cares of this world and fixing our eyes on Jesus, we are going to talk about the one that fell among the thorns. The one that fell among the thorns. So 
what does it look like to be choked? The cares of this world smother us. They smother us. We are seeking success. We're seeking platforms. We're seeking more money. We're seeking more recognition. We're seeking a family, more children, whatever. You plug it in. And that striving of more, 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 what it's doing is it's smothering us. And it's tainting our view of the kingdom of God. And we are not able to bring forth the fruits of the spirit while we are so distracted on this striving. And so we have to be aware of this enormous power that comes from these simple things that distract us away from God. We have to refuse to be swamped by the cares of this world because they produce the wrong attitude in our souls. I am prone to wander. I am. I am not perfect. I struggle as hard as you. And I'm always asking the Lord to bring me back or cut away anything in my life where it becomes about me and not about him. I don't care how good it is. Just because it's a good thing does not mean it's a God thing. And so the smothering of the cares of this world, and if we are not doing these heart checks often, we're going to get lost and not even know it. We're going to get lost and not even know it. And so uh, Mark 4, 18 and 19 is a different vantage point on the same scripture. But he says, still others are like seeds sown among the thorns. They hear the word, but the cares of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, the desires of other things come in to choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. That's a powerful statement. Are you hearing it this morning though? Because I literally sat in front of this and I was just like, like I had to just sit and dig deep, like post this church before church, sit with the Lord because the cares of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, the desire for other things. And I love that it's so general because <laughs> you can plug in whatever, whether it's the perfect body or the perfect man or you plug it, you plug it in. It chokes the word and it becomes unfruitful. Why are we here? Why are we here? The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Why are the workers few? I believe that the workers are distracted. And I've been guilty of that. We are distracted. If you look at Galatians 5, 22 to 23, these are the fruits of the Spirit. Now, another scripture that we maybe know by heart. Maybe you sang the song in church, but I want you to read it like you've never read it before. We cannot produce love, joy, peace, gentleness, gentleness with people and yourself, goodness, meekness, faithfulness, or self-control without the spirit. And we're not plugging into the spirit if we're consumed by the cares of this world. Because what that shows me when I'm consumed by more money, more success, more recognition, more, 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 is that my eyes are no longer on the spirit and the Holy Spirit is no longer guiding me because I'm going rogue. And I'd rather chase things that are not going to be eternal. Earthly glory without eternal purpose is meaningless. Meaningless. I really... You know, we've been doing a church series um, at my church all about heaven. And I've never dug in deep into heaven. But let me tell you, when you start to really look at, you know, why we're here and where we're going and our life review when we're in front of Jesus, he doesn't care how much success or recognition or platforms or whatever that you've had. It'll be about people and relationships and were you a light? And so the cares of this world taint us from that. I did not bring the scripture up. I don't even remember where it is in the Bible. Probably should look it up for you. Maybe some of you who are on here live can do that for me. But do you remember the story about Lot's wife? They had to leave the land and she looked back and turned into stone. After the angel said, you know, don't look back, don't look back. Just focus on it. She was looking back and I think it's for a lot of reasons, but it was just that the cares of the world, she was so tied up to her earthly world that she couldn't let it go despite God being like, we're gonna move forward. That's a powerful story if you look at it from, an, from, from this understanding of how the cares of this world can smother you and even like for her, it, it led to her death because it was so consuming for her. 
And then if you want to look at the desire for wealth, because you guys know I don't skirt around the topic of money because it is one of the greatest things that people chase. And it's one of been, been the, one of the greatest battles for me is 1 Timothy 6, 7 to 11. The desire for wealth magnifies distraction. The desire for wealth magnifies distraction. Wealth is very enticing, but it never yields the expected rewards that you, that you have plans for, right? It promises to make you happy, but when you get it, when you gain it, it doesn't. And even beyond that, I really believe that more wealth sometimes means more problems. We're often more tempted to be dishonest, to cheat, to, to, cheat, to oppress, or take advantage of others if we're not seeking God first in it and understanding that everything we have and everything we are is His. When you start to really believe that and see that, you start to understand that this life is not your own and that everything you have isn't your own. It's not my money. Luca is not my son. He's God's son. He is my earthly responsibility, but he's not, I don't own him. You start to, you start to just have less pressure, less fear. When you just care about loving God and loving people, the pressure's off. But you can't do that without him. My dad and I have been coming on every Tuesday night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time to bring you back to the cross and understanding the weight of that sacrifice. And here we are consumed by the cares of this world. I have to ask myself questions all the time. Karen, is this thing that you're stressing about going to matter a year from now? Five years from now? Is it worth stealing away today's strength and today's joy? Is it worth it? Stress isn't bad. What stress does is it shows you the things that matter to you. It's a guide. It's a marker. When your body and your mind start to experience that stress, your body's saying, this matters to me. But that's a good gut check for us, sisters, because what is it that you're stressing about? Is it finances? And because... It's not that it's wrong to be mindful and want to be responsible, but is it consuming your mind and dismissing God's presence? That's when it's sinful. That's when it's a problem. These are, guys, these are things I'm saying to myself this morning. I want you to understand everything I bring to you. It's because God and I had a powwow and he's like, Karen, we've got to look at these weeds that are choking your life because I want to use you. But your light is being dimmed and eclipsed by the cares of this world. So we've got to move some things aside. So give me, give me hearts in the comments if you're hearing me this morning, if this is applicable to you this morning, because I love engagement on here. I'm not here speaking at you. I want to have a conversation with you. Have you, give me a one in the comments if you've struggled with being consumed by the cares of this world and you know it's becoming a distraction. You know it's becoming a distraction because it is for me. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm talking about it because I know I need a heart check. And I need to make sure that I'm not giving Satan a foothold over the gifts that God has given me where it starts to become about me and less about him. So taking it even further, you know, Matthew 6, 20, 24 says that we can't serve two masters. And here he is talking about God and money. I really believe that we start to get split and we start to be more consumed by the world when we are serving two masters. Thanks, Jane. I appreciate you, girl. You know, it's, it's crazy what happens when our allegiance is split and it's only supposed to be for the Lord. When we straddle the fence, we are unfruitful. You cannot bear kingdom fruit straddling the fence. You can't. And even if it looks like you are, you can do good things. That does not mean they are God things. Commentator Adam Clark says, Man is anxious over worldly cares with the delusive hopes and promises of riches. This causes man to abandon the great concerns of the soul and seek in their place what he shall eat, what he shall drink, and with that, he sh and what he shall be clothed with. It is a dreadful stupidity of man 
thus to barter spiritual for temporal good, a heavenly inheritance for an empty portion. That was a lot of words, like old words too, but do you hear the heart behind that? Behind that? It's the dreadful stupidity, that's some powerful language here, but to barter the spiritual for temporal good and a heavenly inheritance for an empty portion. This always brings me back to Matthew 6.33. Seek first the kingdom of God. If there is any Bible passage that can keep our lives simple, this is it. This is it. Seek first the kingdom of God. In all that you do, if you start to feel yourself getting anxious, just take a quick deep breath and pause and just ask yourself, am I seeking first the kingdom of God with this? Have I surrendered it at the foot of the cross? Have I told Jesus my fears, my doubts, my concerns? Have I come to him with it? Have I left it with him? Because he doesn't want you to carry those burdens. He wants you to trust you to trust him with those. So in closing, every day we have to nurture our spiritual garden. We have one, right? Good morning, Nasser. Thank you, sir. Right back at you. Um, and prayer and time in God's word, these are necessary things for spiritual growth, for spiritual maturity. I sometimes find myself compromising time with God because of the cares of this world and my to-do list is long and so I shorten time with him but this this is what I need I cannot serve well if I'm not filling myself with him and nurturing my spiritual garden and not only are we nourishing it but we have to weed things out we have to weed things out. Maybe it's a television show. Maybe it's um, social media. Like, I'm not saying you need to delete everything. I'm just saying we have to protect our relationship with God, protect our peace, and create boundaries where there need to be boundaries, friends. If, you, if one of your greatest cares of the world is... Um, body image, attaining the perfect body. I'm a health coach, so I'm gonna bring that in because it's easy to talk about. You need to take a step back and look at social media and look at who you're following. Are they pushing you forward or are they making the comparison game harder? And it may not be that they're a bad person. You might be following me, right? But it's creating just that desire for things that just, it's not helpful. Sometimes you just gotta unfollow. That has nothing to do with the person. It's not personal. It's your personal journey that you have to protect with the Lord. So you've gotta weed things out. And then keep asking yourself, do I allow myself to keep getting sidetracked by the small things? Are we sleeping, friends? Because we need to wake up. We need to wake up. Are we coasting because we need to wake up? Coasting, I think, is one of the most dangerous places in Christianity. We think we're okay, but we're coasting. We're not intentional with the Lord. It's easy to get sidetracked. And so this is my heart for us this morning, is that smothering, how do you attack back? Yo, get up and open your Bible and spend time with Jesus. Seek his kingdom first. Invite him into every decision you're making every day. Don't overcomplicate your relationship with God. Just like I say, don't overcomplicate your health. Move your body four to five times a week naturally. Eat as, whole food, as many whole foods as you can and sleep. Don't overcomplicate your wellness. Don't overcomplicate your relationship with the Lord. Bible and prayer and seeking him first. And not being afraid to be real with him because he knows you already. Like, he knows everything about you. It's not like you're like, God, you didn't know that I've been anxious. He knows. You might as well just come and talk to him about it. Just be real. And practice feeding your faith. I talked about this the other day. And starving your fear. 
feed your faith. Protect your peace. Protect your relationship with God. Put boundaries where you need boundaries. Weed out the, distract the distractions. So I'm going to pray for us in closing because this is a heavy topic and I myself need to sit down and spend more time in prayer through it because I do get distracted easily and I, and I want to make sure that we don't miss the point. I don't want to leave this earth and have missed the point. Are we missing it? Are we missing it? God, I just want to thank you this morning for your presence. Thank you for your rod and your staff. Because without them, we'd be lost. We need your direction and guidance. We need you to bring us back when we're lost and confused and striving for things that don't matter. Success isn't wrong. Platforms aren't wrong. But the minute any of those things become our desire more than you, Lord, we've missed the point. The cares of this world are strong. Help our love for you to be even stronger and our trust in you to be even stronger. I pray for every friend of mine who is listening this morning that they would not worry about me, but they would hear you this morning. They would open the Bibles for themselves this morning and they would just sit and dine with you and allow themselves to be transformed by your word. May we hear it this morning and help us understand and apply. I do believe that application and trust bring understanding and time. We love you. Forgive us for the many times that we stray and wander and chase things that are small in comparison to you. You are the greatest treasure in our lives. Help us to chase you with that same enthusiasm and drive as we do earthly things and chase you even harder and love you even harder. We give all of this to you this morning. May your word be planted in our souls and bring in a harvest that we can go out and bring to, into the world as well. In your name we pray, amen. I love y'all. I'd love to hear from you below. What was your takeaway this morning? Like, what did you hear God say to you this morning? Let's have a conversation in the comments. I love it when you guys like talk to each other in the comments. That's my favorite. So let's have a conversation. You guys know that on Sundays after church, before church, I totally unplug off of social media. That's my family day. So I'll make sure that tomorrow morning I will check in with the comments and see how you guys are doing. But I love you and I hope you have a great day.